Now this is Ben Doughty for Boxing Each Illusion TV, near the grounds of Buckingham Palace, as you can see. I've got with me here erstwhile super middleweight and comeback in middleweight George Eliard. How are you today, George? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not bad at all, George. Um, now listen, August the 2nd is the date. Um, I'm not too acquainted with your opponent. Can you tell us more about the opponent and his name, please? Um, Tommy Toulon from Ireland. Um, tough, tough, tough opponent. Um, he's boxed the likes of uh, Georgie Groves, uh, Big Jay Saunders, Paul Smith. Uh, he's been in the top uh, kind of right now, and um, it's a good test for me to get my name back out. On the subject of getting your name back out there, George, and re-establishing what was once thought to be a very promising, potentially glittering career, what happened last time out when we had the, we had the full start on the initial um, German sanction show at your call? Um, I, um, my fault. That's what I say. I, I struggled with the weight. Yep. I did the weight wrong. And, um, I was winning every round and 10 seconds to go. I was devastated. Um, I took a right hand and it absolutely, um, yeah, it sent me, sent me uh, a kick on. It must have been absolutely galling to, to, to lose in the dying seconds like that of a fight that you had in the bag. Um, it was horrible. Man pride was, was broken that day, that's for sure. Um, I was absolutely devastated. And you, I was just more, more for, sorry for the, the support I had, the fans that come out to see me. Um, uh, that's what hurt the most as well. Not just let, let myself down, let the fans down, the fans that support me that day. That's always, a, that's always a common thing. When fighters do suffer a setback, a lot of the time they feel for the people who've been part of that journey and the people who've uh, made it possible for them to support them. Uh, Joe, what have you done differently this time? You were talking to me about the weight and the issue about having previously suffered your losses at Super Middle Weight. What are we doing this time? Right, let, let, let me put it this way. You can see how trim I am. Absolutely, ever, absolutely. Have, have, very impressive. Uh, four and a half, nearly five stone I've lost. Have you yeah. ever known George Uriard to be two weeks away from a fight and to be on weight? I haven't known that phenomenon previously. No, it's, never I? it's never happened, and it's, 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 it's never happening. So. I, uh, I want to talk to you about, about weight in a second, but can I ask in general, are you benefiting from the, uh, the natural process of maturity, where you actually understand how, how better to do things, and how to live, and how to conduct yourself now as a professional athlete? Yeah, definitely, correct. Um, but at the same time, I've got to thank my trainers. I've got Danny, Danny Fielder yeah. and um, Paul Cavanaugh, who's doing my conditioning side, and, um, and Francesco. Paul Francesco and I got their uh, gym and up and stuff. It's so, called uh, Elite uh, Commando Fitness. And what they do for me is amazing. And now they've got me in this condition, and I can only check my health and say thank you to them. And, and Danny, and um, we, I work as a team now, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't bullshit about that one. Yeah. You know, I get on with things, uh, they tell me to jump, and I ask how I. And the party ends over. That, uh, that's it, yeah. George, you and me were welterweights together in the amateurs. Now, when you tell me you've lost four or five stone, can I ask you, how, do, how did you manage to achieve those weight gains? That, from somebody who basically was a welterweight as a kid yeah. and, and has grown now into a middleweight, you know, legitimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was that? Roberto Duran used to make these prodigious weight gains. They said he ballooned up to around 12 or 13 stone when he was a lightweight, making nine stone nine. Yeah. So obviously you're in good company, but how did you manage those, those kind of fluctuations? Um, Living unlike a professional. Quite simply. simply, simply as in in, in three know, words. Yeah. Um, that's why you got Carl Foch, you know, the, the, the top athletes, they lived the life. And I never at the time, which I'm doing it now. You know? And it's never, all the time, not just between yeah, in between no, fights as well. Look, if you wanna live this is short career boxing. So if you wanna if you wanna um, prolong it, yeah, if you want live the life of a professional athlete, that's for kids growing up now who are coming through the, the ranks now. Don't don't need to be living this Ricky Atten life. No, you don't need to be doing yeah. that. Despite you know? Hatton made wonderful achievements, oh, yeah, we obviously yeah, will yeah, we'll caveat that. You've got a decent kid in front of you on August the second. Yeah. Now he's only lost to to, to good fighters, good yeah. names. What do you imagine how do you imagine a fight will unfold with yourself? Um, me winning, and then, and then hopefully this will, this will put my name back on in the mix of things. Um, you know? We've spoken about this before. What are you looking? Where are you looking to go next? Um, obviously, fighters say they don't look past the initial obstacle in front of them. We respect that, but obviously you must have an overview of what of what you wish to achieve after this. Well, obviously, I I, I, look, I want to fight for the British Commonwealth and the Olympic Bronze Medals. At the moment, I can't because I'm not with the British Boxing Board of Control. But um, there'll be other titles after this, like the NBC, uh, you know, the WBO, the IBF, uh, belts. I can um, fight for them. So um, I'm not going to talk too much and say things right now because I'm not in a position to. So 
So after this fight, I'll be in a position to, to, to shout my mouth off a little bit. So, on August 2nd, you're going to let your fist do the talking? Let my fist do the talking. Good men. Thanks, Pete.